the ICAPL, that's the, the, the short for the, the International Consortium, is uh, uh, an initiative that's based on two points. One is a training educational program for uh, involving three countries, Mexico, Brazil, and Uruguay. And uh, the other one is uh, a trial, clinical trial in a sense, that uh, aims in improving the results of the treatment outcome of APL in developing countries. Because uh, APL is a um, highly curable disease. Yet if left untreated or if the diagnosis is postponed, it's associated with a very high early mortality. In fact, we, we have done a retrospective analysis in Brazil uh, involving 132 Brazilian patients treated with atra and anthracyclines. And we have uh, obtained an overall survival at two years of only 52%. And this is poor result was mainly due to a very high uh, early mortality rate. Uh, about uh, more than 20% of our patients died within seven days of the treatment in, the, in this historical data. So uh, this international consortium was uh, built up uh, under the auspices of the American Society of Hematology. And um, we involved several hematology institutions in the three countries. And uh, we have up to now enrolled 114 patients. And um, we have uh, one of the, the pillars, one of the concepts that we, we have incorporated in, the, in this initiative is that uh, once you have a suspicious suspicion of the, of, the, of the diagnosis, you should start ATRA. And then we used a very uh, sensitive and cheap tool to make the diagnosis, which is immunofluorescence with an anti-PML antibody that was provided by Dr. Fallini from, from Italy. And uh, with that, we, we, we could make the diagnosis within 24 hours. And then after that, the patient was enrolled, uh, dalderubicin was restarted, and we followed all these cases through the, uh, discussing all these cases through the internet uh, every other week uh, using internet tools that were provided by the St. Jude's Hospital. And with that, we have changed completely the outcome of the patient. So the overall survival now at two years after a follow-up of, uh, median follow-up of 18 months, is of 77%, and the disease-free survival at two years is 95%. So basically, what we have shown that we, you can adapt uh, standard treatments from developed countries to developing countries without uh, changing the, the results. Oh, definitely, uh, both uh, in Latin America and outside. So we would like to, to bring this uh, to other countries and uh, try, because th this is the reality that is very far from, the, we, we, we try to, to shorten the gap between developed and developing countries. All the countries that, or institutions that are candidates should contact the International Members Committee of ASH and uh, there is some requirements, just like uh, is there ATRA in your country, is it free? Uh, how is the blood banking situation in your country? Can you, can you provide uh, platelet transfusions, plasma transfusions without uh, any problem? So, and if this is the case, then uh, we would accept as uh, institutions and countries. Right. And uh, we have, for example, we have Chile, it's, it's uh, already in a very advanced phase of consideration, and we have recently received a, a proposal from Peru. is really independent. Uh, we have some support, for example, in some countries, uh, for example, in Brazil, it, it's, the, the, it's a public system, a health system. So basically all the drugs are provided by the government. So we got the, 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 the support for that. Um, in, uh, in Mexico, there is a support also from uh, Fundación para la Salud, it's a foundation that's also governmental. So we have some support.